You're starting to work on a new web design project. Yes, that's exciting. But now you've opened up a new file, you're staring at a blank screen, and you have no clue what to put on the homepage. Time goes by. Your clients are calling asking when it's going to be ready. Every minute that you procrastinate, you are losing money. This ends right now. I'm going to explain to you exactly what you need to put on the homepage of your website. And because you've wasted enough time as it is, I challenge myself to teach you the perfect landing page structure in five minutes or else my kids are gonna dump this ice bucket water on my head. Challenge accepted. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate this on this Figma template. And if you want to use it to start working with, you can grab it in the description below. So I'm gonna start by talking about the hero section, which is the first topmost section of the website, which is called above the fold before you have to scroll to anything. And this is the most important thing because if we don't get this right, people are not gonna continue in scrolling. So the first thing that we have is obviously a title. And this title needs to explain the value that you are providing. Now, this doesn't necessarily Necessarily always mean to say what you are doing because if you, you might be doing something generic like I sell cars or I build websites or your product again might be we sell coffee that might be generic so you want to explain the value the uniqueness of it so that can be the problem that you're solving for example like I will generate more traffic for your business or something like this or our coffee is uniquely made by blah 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 so this is where you explain the value or what happens when you are going to drink the coffee like so this is the value and we want to start off with this now below this we always have a subtitle and the purpose of the subtitle is to actually explain how we're how this value is being created so here you might say I drive more sales to your business by building a high converting website or something like this. And sometimes you might even say, who is this for, right? So I do this for small businesses or this is good for entrepreneurs and so forth and so forth. So this is the purpose of having a subtitle in your hero section. The next thing that you want to have is some kind of a visual. And the point of the visual is to help them imagine what it is that they're buying. So obviously if it's a product, you wanna show the product and more specifically, you might even want to show the product in use so they can imagine that that's them using it. If you're a service provider, you might want to see the experience of working with you. So if you're a freelancer, maybe that's a photo of you so people can imagine who is the person that they are hiring. The next thing that we have here is called social proof. And in this example here, I have 5,000 people like you have purchased this product. And the, the point of this is to make it believable, right? Now, we don't always have this. Sometimes you will see maybe logos of companies that we've worked Worked with or some kind of numbers like X numbers sold uh, a few years in business and so forth. But th the point of this is again to make it credible, to make your claims credible. And next we have the call to action, which is basically a button that tells them what to do next. Should I get started? Should I book a call? Should I buy this now? But you want to easily tell people what to do next. Otherwise, they might just leave the website and be lost. So these are the uh, core elements of a hero section. Let me give you an example here. So here's an example from Stripe, really well-designed uh, website. And they're starting with payment infrastructure for the internet. So this is basically what they're doing. And here they have millions of companies of all sizes from startups to Fortune use Stripe. So they're both doing the social proof because millions of companies and telling people, you know, the size of the company that is right to work with them. Start now is the call to action. And they do show here both the analytics you'll see as a user, but also what the customer experience for people using their app, you know, is going to be like when they are buying. So this is one hero section example. Here's another one for a copywriter. So she is basically saying, what it is that she's doing. Um, she is showing an image of herself so people can visualize, oh look, she's so nice, it must be nice to work with her. And she is showing work completed for, so that's basically her social proof. I did work for all of these brands and she has the call to action here, although not very prominent, but still a call to action. See, I do have only one minute. I'll try to go through super fast. The next stuff you wanna talk about is features and benefits, which is you've made a very big claim at the top, a big promise. Now, how are you going to deliver on this? How does this actually work? Now, the difference between features and benefits, I wanna give you an example from Tesla. So features are the technical specs of what this is. So it might be, you know, 
200 miles per hour or 120 horsepower. This is really technical, but people usually don't care about the technical. They want to know what's the benefit. If I use this, what's going to happen? And you can see it here. You will, you know, stay connected or you will have immersive sound. So these are the benefits. And you can think about this in a metaphor like the Mario game where you, you take this flower and then you can throw fireballs. So the features are, we have a flower, but what this actually helps you do, the benefit is you'll be able to throw fireballs. So that's how you think about this. And that's what you do in the next section. It can be short, it can be long. Next, you want to show additional social proof. And in this case, it's testimonials. Again, this can be logos, testimonials, numbers, whatever you want. Ah, God damn it. So five minutes have passed. I've got a little bit more but I do want you to make sure that you get this and that's valuable and useful for you. So it's going to take probably additional minute or so to finish. And yeah, my kids get to throw this on me. I'm sure they'll be super, super happy. Next, we have the what's usually called FAQ, frequently asked questions. And the reason that we have this is to handle objections. So you think about a landing page as basically a sales presentation. We're trying to sell some ideas, some products, some services. And think about this, when you go to the store, there's a person there helping you to answer all your questions. And your questions are basically the reasons that you are not going to buy. These are your objections like, but wait, what happens if this and what happens if that? So because we don't have a live salesperson on our page, we are going to use the FAQ like frequently asked questions to predict the objections that you know, our visitors might have so we can tackle them and answer them. And that's going to increase the likelihood that they purchase. Once we've done that, basically, we're ready to make the sale once again before they leave. So this is not more social proof. This is last call to action, which is basically, okay, now you're convinced. Now you can go ahead and buy now. You never want to just leave, want to leave them at the end of the, the page without telling them once again what they need to do right now. And usually on the last thing on every page is a footer, which basically tells them what else is on this website, perhaps subscribe them to a newsletter or something like this. But it's just kind of like a, a, an organizational tool for the end of the page. So this is the structure. Uh, it's going to help you and it can work for almost any business, website, homepage, landing page. I hope that was valuable. And now it's time to take responsibility. Action.